What's going on guys, how you doing today? I'm Michael Anthony, I am gonna be talking to you about creating wall art specifically with uh, Sigma Glass. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in Los Angeles, California. These are the things I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today. Defining impact, what's impact and why it's important in wedding photography and all types of photography for that matter as well. We're gonna be talking about choosing the right focal length for your images. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how lighting can impact the mood of your photographs, when to use the right type of light. And then lastly, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about creating dramatic portraiture. These are the things that we try to do in our work to make it stand out and make it be different to potential clients. All the things we're gonna be talking to you guys about today, there's one common denominator, right? Storytelling is an element that has to be present in all of your images. And if you do this, it will drive an emotional connection between your clients and their photographs that will in turn get them to spend a little bit more money with you or in turn at least value your work more than if you guys don't have a story element to them. Focus on your client experience. Their perception of your images is directly tied to their experience that they have with you guys. So if you guys show up to your shoot on time, you deliver a fun experience for them, they are gonna love their photos even more than, uh, than if you just didn't do those things and showed up, right? We can use any gear that we want, but there's a couple things that are really important, right? The ease of use, how easily it can integrate between me and my team, how everybody's able to use it. The build quality, we shoot in some of the craziest conditions, rain, wind, snow, all sorts of things every year. So the build quality of the glass that we choose is extremely important, right? The reliability, I need to know that my gear will uh, not get in the way of my final shot. Really, really important, right? The color that the, uh, the lenses are gonna be providing for us. I want it to be as true to life as possible, as neutral as possible, without oversaturating or adding a color cast to our final images. Because at the end of the day, guys, these images are going on my client's wall. Having lenses that resolve that detail, extremely, extremely important, right? And then your autofocus speed. If you guys are shooting weddings, you guys know that moments happen in a blink of an eye, right? And then they're here and then they're gone. And if you're not able to capture that moment, if your gear again is getting in the way of the shot, it's gonna be a bad experience for your clients. So it's really important to make sure that your autofocus is not only accurate, but it's reliable and quick as well too. This is the current gear list that we use. You guys see we use a lot of the Sigma Art Series and then um, you know a couple of the zoom lenses as well too. But whatever you guys end up using, just make sure it works in your workflow, right? So when you guys have clients who are considering you, they're looking through your portfolio and they're scrolling through a, uh, an Instagram portfolio or an online portfolio, what's gonna get them to stop on your images? It has to be something that's different. And, uh, and those images that become part of your portfolio, they help define your brand. <clears throat> Again, Impact's gonna set you guys apart from your competition and it's gonna really set that first stage because it's the first impression your clients will have of you, okay? Now, let's talk about the elements of an impactful image. The things are gonna define the client's perception of those photos. The moment, the emotional connection that your clients have to their images, right? Extremely, extremely important. Composition, it's gonna help to frame or lead the eye of the viewer directly to your subjects. The lighting is gonna draw the viewer's attention to the right part of the image, right? If you have images that have highlights blown out in wrong parts of the photo, it's gonna distract the viewer and bring their eye into a place where it shouldn't be. Lastly, uniqueness, something that is bold and fresh. Don't be afraid to get close to your subjects. We prefer the 35 millimeter prime, and by doing that, we can get about a handshake's distance away from our subjects, about as close as I am to you right here. And then by doing that, we're able to capture energy. We can lead the focus on you, but still have the stuff that's going on in the background to help tell that entire story. So on a wedding day, this is the primary lens that we're using the majority of the day. These are some examples of moments that we've taken that are really important to our clients, right? So when you guys are shooting weddings, everybody in that first row is extremely important to them. Okay? You wanna make sure that you guys are standing there and you're able to capture the reactions of the things that are happening. And to do that, sometimes you have to look beyond the obvious, right? So for instance, in this right here, we're, we might be focused on our bride and groom. Okay? But if you guys look beyond what's going on right in front of you, sometimes some of the best stuff is happening right in the background as well too. Or an image like this, during the vows, guys, we have a, a set routine that we do. Whenever someone's talking, they're giving the vows, our primary shooter is capturing the other person's reaction. Our secondary shooter will be on the other side, capturing the speaker giver, and then we just switch when, the, uh, when they switch vows, right? These are the things that tend to carry a lot of weight and a lot of emotion, and if you're there and you're anticipating it, you're gonna be able to capture them as well, too. Then the fun stuff, things like this, right? In order to capture the moment in the best possible way, you wanna find the position that's gonna help tell the story and capture the energy. So I wanted to get underneath the action right here, shooting upward to capture them as they're going after that football which had the garter wrapped around it, right? In addition, guys, from a lighting perspective, we're adding light on the front and on the back of them and we're making sure that the camera is not gonna be able to see that light source because then it'll flare out and it won't, eventually won't look good, right? 
When a real moment happens at the height of that emotion, if you guys stop shooting because you think you got it, you're gonna miss some of the best possible parts of that day, right? When people have you know, a good reaction, they start laughing. Shoot through that moment all the way to the end of it, and then you guys can pick the best expression. Without lighting, we're not gonna have a photograph. This is what we do, the actual art of capturing light and the ability to use it creatively is what's going to create good impact for your clients. Okay, use the light to draw the viewer's attention to your photographs and look for sources of natural light and when it's not there, find creative ways to manipulate it, right? This is a good example right here. So we're out here shooting and, uh, and we had this beautiful um, scene in the background, right? And the sprinkler was going off. So I asked my new assistant, this was his second day on the job, and I'm like, hey man, we're gonna test your you know, commitment to this business right here. I'm gonna have you guys stand over there and, uh, and back like the water, right? So whenever you guys have something that's semi-translucent and you guys light it from behind, it will show up on camera. So this can work with water, can work with smoke, it can work with foliage, anything again, semi-translucent. So after we put a gel on that light, this is the final shot that we're creating right here. Something a little different and a little bit unique, okay? This is kind of our signature style of portraiture, and the way that we get this kind of an image is we're using different types of lighting. So if you guys see here, you have a light on the right side, and then you have a light on the left, which is creating this highlight right on her back and her shadow, okay? This is flat lighting. All you guys have to do is find a good source of open shade and add a reflector directly underneath right here, and then it'll create that soft glow on the face. And whenever you guys are shooting by the beach, there's gonna be a lot of humidity in the air, right? And if you add a light, especially at nighttime behind your subjects, you'll see that glow around them, okay? Because it's lighting up all the moisture and all of those things in the air. So if you guys are shooting on a foggy morning, if you guys are shooting by the beach, this is a really good time to, to use this technique and backlight your subjects, okay? And key to lighting though, guys, it's balance. In order to get to our shot quickly, guys, the way that we do this is we get our ambient light first as we're walking up to a scene. Then we're gonna add each individual light into our scene by itself, test the power on it and once we have that power together all the lights will go on and then we can pose our subjects and by doing that in that format we can get to our final shot in a matter of seconds with our clients it doesn't take a lot of time to dial it in after you're used to doing it composition goes beyond the rule of thirds but the goal of your composition is that it needs to bring the viewers attention directly to your subjects that is the ultimate goal when you guys are creating your compositions okay and I want to teach you guys one trick that we did in the very beginning we went down to the city with our subjects we took our camera set it to f8 right and we had to create portraits in a busy environment using the background without being able to put stuff out of focus, right? And if you do that on just a couple of shoots, you guys are gonna start to notice that you start looking for things in your background, in your environment that are there, and you start trying to find negative space to put your subjects. And that's really one of the best ways you can learn to be a better compositionalist. This is a good example right here. We're looking to create this S-curve, cutting the frame in half with this diagonal line coming from the, from the, uh, the boat, right? In this situation, guys, there's a couple things that we're looking to do. We're looking to create a good composition, good light, but we also want to tell the story, right? So we ask him to kiss her cheek and then she turns her face up into the light right there and looks at the camera and it becomes a camera aware portrait that's focused directly on her. So you guys can use your environment and you can also use the attire in order to help create better compositions. Something like this as well, looking at the St. Louis Arch to lead uh, our eyes directly into our subjects, but then we use the veil to lead the eyes back up into them, right? This is a, uh, a good example of using shapes. So you have triangle on the bottom, you have this triangle from her, the triangle on the top, and then you're framing her in between these three things as well too. Uniqueness is a number one factor that we have in determining the impact of your photos. Now if you guys combine all the elements we talked about, and then you have a creative concept, that image will become unique and it will become impactful, okay? We shoot engagement sessions here all of the time, right? And we can put our couples on these rocks, but in order to make this image really unique and stand out, we wanted to incorporate the water motion, right? So as the waves were coming up, we ran our couple out there, put them up there, and I had a tripod right here. As the water came in, I let it have about a two-second exposure, right? Everybody asked if we brought them out there on a boat or something, but literally, that water is only inches deep right there. And then this is a venue that we shoot at all the time, right? And when we have venues that are popular in our area, and if you guys are wedding photographers, trust me on this, right? Try to find a new and unique way to take the money shot at that venue, right? Because if you do that, and those images start showing up in a Google search result for clients who are searching for photos of that venue, that image will stand out amongst all the other photos that are there. And that's one of the ways that we've helped develop vendor relationships, and we've developed uh, the ability to book clients at venues that we wanna shoot at, right? 
Another example right here, maternity photography, something uh, you know, that a lot of us get to do if we're wedding photographers. Eventually, you can turn these clients into life clients, right? And if you develop a unique style of wedding photography, then these clients will come back to you because, again, they can't get this anywhere else, right? The creative aspect of combining all of those elements together is going to help to define your brand, guys. And that unique portfolio will be the best asset that you guys have. So the only limitation, guys, to your own impact is your imagination and your commitment. Thank you guys so much for coming out and joining me. I'll be here if you have any questions.